welcome to Out and About Art, your PGTV source for all things art in Polk County. I'm your host, Jasmine Ali. First up this month, meet Sung Do Hyun, a self-taught modern artist living in Winter Haven who creates artwork ranging from simple pencil drawings to full-scale oil paintings. He embarked upon his artistic journey seven or eight years ago and has been experimenting and creating new techniques ever since. Here's a look at the bold, introspective artwork of Sung Do Hyun. My name is Sung Do Hyun from South Korea. It's been 13 years living in the United States. I've been an artist, I think, um, about seven or eight years. And I've been doing oil color, oil painting, and charcoal drawing, or pen illustra illustrations. I'm, I'm trying to create some uh, combination of a Western style art and Asian style watercolor so I can create something like like illustration. Everything I, I, I want I do is like illustrative, have some story or message I wanna deliver. I started as a self-taught. I bought some books and I mostly I whenever I drew I did illustration stuff like like my own diary. When when I have I have a thoughts I wanted to um, describe with my drawings and then uh, I found that there's a limit of my you know, techniques and skills so I couldn't really show what I want to you know show so I took some classes in a uh, um, uh, Tampa Museum of Art so every Sunday I drove down to Tampa Museum of Art and I drew it's a, it was more like a, it was it was not really class it was more like open studio you just chip in ten dollars per week and there is a model you can practice drawing I took another class like weekly class and then eventually I met my friend who is an uh, art graduate art school graduate I was sketching at, at the Starbucks and then he saw me and uh, he was he saw me often often. I was drawing there, so he talked to me, and then he invited me to his studio, so I learned from it. While I was doing like portrait and uh, representation art, there is somehow I wanted to do something like besides, you know, what it look like, you know, art. So uh, these days I try to combine, you know, my illustration and old painting techniques I learned while I'm doing my art. I feel really. Uh, Peace, you know, and, and come. Exciting thing about art is uh, you do something new on your own. Like when I create my own illustration, it's totally based on my imagination. So it really uh, gives me so much freedom and then excitement because I'm doing something new that doesn't exist before. I try to keep it simple. I try not to put so much stuff in, so many meanings to it. So if people see my work and my work draw their attention to itself, and maybe they can understand right away what it means by looking at it. If they don't understand, it's fine. But the, uh, when I explain to them, just one simple word can make them understand, then I'm happy about it. Yeah. Interesting is uh, when we th think about like traditional Asian art or culture, it sounds very old, ancient, and then far from these days, you know, like a trend. But when I look at the uh, um, Korean art or Chinese art or Japanese art, it's very mod modern and very simple. When it comes to Asian art, we see emptiness. The empty spot of the uh, uh, work is also part of beauty. So empty, uh, the beauty of emptiness. So when you look at Asian, uh, Asian art, traditional art, there is always some empty spot. Not, not everything is decorated and everything. I think uh, that affects me, so I try to keep it simple. From the beginning of my career or 
drawing. I always thought if I can grab them in front of my work for you know a certain time, like minute or seconds, then I'm happy first because I draw their attention. You know there are so many stuff can uh, disrupt our you know, attentions. We we pass a lot of stuff, but if they stop at my work and they look at it and they you know take their time, then I'm happy. And secondly, if they understand what I intend. Then that's the bonus, and I'm happy about it. Sometimes I'm very uh, unsure about my work, but the, um, I try not to think about it. As long as uh, I tried something, I'm happy because I tried. These days I set up, uh, set my own rule. If I experiment something and then it came out good, then at least make ten different pieces similar to it, so you get more, you know, into that you know, um, technique, because I, I think uh, to be uh, your own art artist, you have to create your own method and you have to be an expert on it instead of uh, someone else's technique. So developing your own technique or method or steps is a lot of work to do and you don't even know when you do some just one or two work. When you do a lot of reputation and a lot of projects, then later on you can see some kind of common steps. So that's what I try to do these days. I see that a lot of uh, efforts and interest in, in art, local artists in uh, Polk County, like Lakeland, Winter Haven. So it's growing and then there are a lot of good artists there and then a lot of new uh, approach or trying is happening, like events and everything, so it's very impressive and I'm happy about it as an artist. Support a local artist when you see some work, you know, just looking at them, that's really a lot of mean to, you know, that artist. You share the artist you're interested in, others, that also means a lot. And maybe that's the way you uh, support the artist and maybe support your, you know, your town, because like, one good artist can make your city, you know, well known to other, you know, people. You never know. If you want to, if you feel like you want to be an artist or you, you're considering it, you should do it. Because uh, being an artist seems a really difficult thing to do. But I think it's a, one of the easiest things. You need a paper and pencil just to do it. Again, there is no answer. Try to try to something that doesn't have answer. Then you you are the uh, you are the uh, your own answer. So nobody can say it's right or wrong. So that's the easiest thing to do if you're looking at it that way. Yeah. Maybe you could be a good artist. Maybe not. But the fact that you try make you do something else. Mm, uh, I try to uh, make on my own series illustration weekly. So it's more likely uh, my own diary, but it's not personal. But everybody could understand or follow, like something you get impression or idea from our own daily life. So please follow me and um, support me. And also um, um, I try to do some series of portraits about hope. So when, you know, I can share the idea there is always hope, you know, and also uh, I want to work for communities. Like I'm interested in like this is ocean, like pollution, so I want to make a series of uh, um, ocean illustration. So when you see some, please support me and then share about my work to other people. Yeah, they'll be awesome. To keep up with the artwork of Sung Do Hyun, follow him on Instagram by searching for The Unbound Studio or visit his website at theunboundstudio.com. Our next spotlight this month lands on another self-taught artist who uses his voice to express love for wildlife and the natural world. Wayne Chanat is primarily an acrylic artist who enjoys leaving the four walls of his studio behind to paint in plain air. He moved to Lakeland in 2014 and has been involved in the Polk County art scene ever since. Here's a look at the gentle, impressionistic artwork of Wayne Chanat. I 
I am Wayne Chinat. I'm a local Lakeland artist, originally from Ohio. Uh, my background is uh, I was a naturalist, forester, park manager, park director. And all that time in my career, I've always wanted to become and be a wildlife illustrator. So back in the 70s, I began uh, researching and uh, found that they didn't offer any collegiate programs. So off I went on my own. I like wildlife, I do flora, fauna, I do historical structures. I've been painting uh, with acrylics, oils, watercolor. I also do intaglio and I've done some sculpture. I've always had the affinity for nature. Parents would take me out to our local county park districts. I mean, when I was growing up, they used to call me nature boy. Rather than go out and play football or baseball, I would be out catching frogs or snakes. So I always enjoyed the out of doors. Let's see, 2003, uh, we moved into a rural county of Carroll County. At that point in time, I was doing a number of local art shows, well, not local so much, but uh, from Florida up to Michigan. And uh, in 2005, I happened to go to the SKB Black in Du Bois, Wyoming. And there is where I met the plein air artists and the movement. So I've been plein airing ever since about 2005, 2006, and all the way up to today. Plein air, it is the best way to learn how to paint. It challenges you. It, it tests all your abilities and all your skills as an artist. When you go out, I look for such things as value, contrast, light. All these play a factor into a plein air painting. When a plein air painting is successful, it actually draws the person into that painting so he feels an emotion with it, an attachment. So that's the purpose that I see behind a plein air painter, is to engage you, the viewer. How I start, well, sometimes I'll uh, do five by sevens, I'll do eight by tens, probably no bigger than 11 by 14. It usually takes me about two hours to do a work. Anything larger than that, you may come back to the same spot day after day after day. So it's, it's the thrill of it. It's, you know, fighting the mosquitoes, fighting the sun, fighting the humidity. And you bring this all together to give you a completed project. Now what I have here today and how I start, this is a masonite board. It's approximately five by seven. And I go in here onto the board and I will prep the board by toning it. Sometimes I'll use a blue, sometimes I'll use a sienna color. And this is how I start. From this, I will go out, find my location, then I will do a quick sketch on the board with either pencil, and then I will apply Sharpie, and I do the outline. From there, I do a value study onto the board, then I add the color, then I temper the edges, and then I put in my detail. So those are the basic steps that I follow in plain air. It would be Bach Tower, definitely here at Circle B. Um, over at Tamarack, that's another place. Um, down in Homeland, those are wonderful. Anywhere in Lakeland, any of the industrial sites. But uh, those are the areas I look for. Something of uh, Florida's past, perhaps past history, something in the area of industrialization. Sometimes I take a look at uh, just an old scrap car that might be laying along the road, or a rural area with a barn, perhaps. So you, you just never know. don't work on a painting uh, continuously. I start, 
and go, stop and go, stop and go. I'll have three or four paintings on my easel at a time in the studio. I, had, I worked on one studio painting and that was in watercolor and that was back in 1976. I finished it two years ago. So it all depends the mood, how you feel, what you want to look at. I will set a painting aside sometime, well, for 20, 30, 40 years, and then I'll pull it back out again and take a look at it and rework it. My advice is to paint as much as you can. Paint every day. Every painting is a learning experience. You will take something away from the painting. A lot of times, I have a reject pile, and I just throw it aside because I'm really not satisfied with it but yet it'll sit for months and I'll bring it back and I'll say, where did I go wrong? What can I do to improve it? And then I'll bring it back and I'll rework it. Now some of them I don't rework. I just paint right over them with a new painting. So that's one of the benefits of acrylics. I think the biggest difficulty is time. Finding the time to go out and paint. because. Uh, I also had a career in the parks and recreation field. We also ran as a family. We also rehabbed a hundred year old home. So most of the time was consumed uh, just with family affairs and things. And finding that little bit of time to get away, to go to your studio or go outside is what I look forward to. Everybody has their own style, of course, and everyone has their own genre that they want to, how they want to paint in but you have to be committed to it. Coming from Ohio, and our last permanent residence was Carrollton, Ohio, my wife and I ran the art studio there for about seven years. When we moved down here, one of the first things we wanted to do was get involved in the arts. And I'll tell you, we found Ridge Art, I found Bartow Art, I found Lakeland Art Guild, and the five universities that are here. It's just a culture of art and of course the Polk Museum. That's what drew us here to Lakeland. There's a lot of local sources here that you can go to, even if it's just for a day, just to feel, be able to express yourself with paint. Take a paintbrush, throw some paint down, move it around and see what comes out. up with the artwork of Wayne Chanot, visit his website below. For our last segment this month, we're exploring Polk County through the Polk County History Center Citrus Label Tour. The Citrus Label Tour is a driving experience that highlights the historic marketing of citrus through artistic labels. The labels display various flora and fauna, historical sites, military and animals, and are now an important part of Florida's heritage. Let's take a look. I'm Murtis Young, Historic Preservation Manager for Polk County, and today I am so happy to tell you some things about the Citrus Crate Label Tour. The tour was developed to enhance Polk County's history and heritage trail. We recognized uh, about two years ago that the industry was really experiencing a lot of changes. 
It's a strong industry. It's gonna survive. It's gonna be there, but it might look a little different. And one of the things we recognized was the closing of the packing houses, the packing houses that were responsible for packing them beautiful, fresh fruit and shipping it to other markets. So we thought the best way to tell that story is through the citrus crate labels that were applied to the boxes before they were shipped out. They had two purposes, really. One purpose was to give the buyer an opportunity to know the grade of the fruit. So each of the labels has some coloring in the backgrounds to tell you if it's A, B, or C grade, if it's a mixed grade, or different kinds of things about the fruit, the properties of the fruits. Certainly always in sign was fresh, wonderful fruit, but the exterior may have had a little bit of discoloring or something that might indicate that it would be a lower grade. So those labels gave the buyers those kinds of signals. What it also did is it intrigued the buyers when they walked in those cold, frozen warehouses in the north. These beautiful labels inspired them to pick one that might have a beautiful scene of Florida and think, oh, if only we lived in Florida. So they actually help people think about moving to Florida, buying land and moving here, told the story of the fruit, had beautiful ladies sometimes on them, and just they were really there to help market the fruit. So as the packing houses started closing, we wanted to capture that story. So the tour actually is all through Polk County. The labels are installed in each of the cities where these packing houses had a strong presence. And you'll have to, you know, it's an interesting thing to think about. The presence, not only of an industry, but the people and the families whose lives supported the agricultural aspect of the county at this time, working in those packing houses, helping to harvest and pack and ship that fruit. Great story, great story about Polk County history. So some of my favorite labels that I wouldn't want you to miss on the tour certainly starts right here at the Polk County History Center with Miss Polka Dot. We selected Polka Dot because of course we are the Polk County History Center and she represents Polk County. We think also it is such an interesting story about the message of citrus when you see young, vital, healthy people enjoying fresh fruit, enjoying not only the delicious taste of the fruit, but the benefits of the vitamin C. I also, having grown up in Lake Wales, love all of the royalty labels that are on display in Lake Wales at the museum, and then also some additional labels over at the library. Those speak of royalty and I think the nobility and the strength and the power of this industry and the value of having this fruit. I love those. And then of course the whimsical wonderful tigress labels that were produced and are on display at the stadium for the Detroit Tigers. So those are special, they're all special, they're all colorful, whimsical, and just speak stories, just volumes of the flora and fauna of Polk County, the industry itself, and just reminds us of that wonderful, wonderful time in history when those packing houses were thriving and that fruit was shipping from Polk County into those northern markets with this wonderful, wonderful product. To download a map of the Polk County Citrus Label Tour, visit the website below. 
You can also check out our podcast by visiting citruslabeltour.podbean.com and make sure to stay tuned to the Polk County Government YouTube page for video clips and historical background on each label. That's all I have for this month, so I want to thank you so much for joining me and encourage you to tune in next month for more art out and about.